Hello, everybody. I'd like to spend a few minutes today to give you some insight about working with and using templates. I'll focus on basically three areas, types, creation and access, and rules and conversions that you can do. So let's start out with types. Basically, we can create the types that we normally support on the platform. We create products, parts, and drawing templates. And for each of these, we can support multiple CAD environments, depending on the kind of CAD systems that you may have. In case you're working with, say, Inventor and Solid Edge and 3D Experience, we could have unique um, templates for each of these. For creation and access, there's really two ways to get into templates. The immersive CAD environment gives us two things we can do. We can create new templates as well as utilize them. The creation panel I'm showing here gives the ability to establish a title, a description, and obviously locate the file on the system and make it the template. When you create templates on the system, you have the option of releasing them so that a broad team can use them, or you can create them as private so they're beneficial only to you. And as I said, you can also utilize them locally within the CAD system, within 3D Experience New is usually the particular menu you'll see for this, within the particular CAD system, and then you're given the option of what do you want to create, a, pro, you know, a part, an assembly, a product, the terminology will be specific to the CAD, and then a choice of multi, one or more templates, depending on how, the how many templates the administrator has created. The second approach is through the platform, and both 3D Product Architect and the Product Release Engineer can take advantage of templates to actually create structure in front of the design effort. So this could be a way to help, you know, predefine what a, a new design will look like, what its breakdown structure is before the designers ever get to it. They don't have to be burdened with structuring the top of the structure, setting part numbers and so forth. It can all be done directly through the product, uh, product architect or the product release engineer. Now there are various rules that the system uses to manage the, this operation. There's obviously unique relationships, as I pointed out earlier, where you can only insert certain structures into other things. You know, I can't have a, a particular sub-assembly that doesn't belong to another CAD system. So we have certain rules that apply. You know, for example, here I've, I've highlighted a camera mount that built in Katia V5. So when I ask it to add a new product under that, the system automatically assumes I'm going to work with a Katia V5 type template. <clears throat> When you add a particular uh, a product, a new product template to the system, the system gives you an, uh, the ability to actually go in and swap that out for a simple part. Maybe you put a product in as a placeholder and a breakdown structure of a new assembly design, and you later decide that just a single part is all we need there. Well, instead of having to uh, delete and you know you can keep that assembly, but you could also just swap it for a convert it to a, a particular part. And, you know, for example, here, and uh, you can see, we'll look at this in a moment in the video. But when I choose a template, the system gives me options for the templates I have for that particular CAD system. And then I can convert them. So let's dive in and take a look at this. So let's start from scratch with just creating a new product here on the product structure editor. I've got a couple things open, but I'm going to create a new disk sander. And I could use any end item I want, but I'm going to use a 3D experience node because I may want to build a hybrid structure. So I need that type of top end to do that. Once I've established it, then I can add more structure to it. I could obviously drag in existing parts as well. But we'll, let's just start by adding a new product to here. And we'll uh, start with, uh, let's just say we're going to make, uh, we want an inventor assembly here. Uh, one, one of the subsystems is going to be designed in inventor. So we could add that to the structure. And while that we're sitting there with that inventor highlighted, and here's an example of how the rules are applied. I'm going to try to add a solid edge assembly. Well, obviously, um, you might guess that that's probably not valid, and the system stops me from doing it. You cannot insert this object type, blah, blah, blah. So it's preventing me from moving further forward with that type of uh, incorrect structure. Let's look at an existing structure I've already created in the system. This one happens to be mostly in Katia V5, just a little camera assembly. And here, and, and so the point here is I can take an existing structure, maybe it's a clone of another structure with already built up from CAD, and create new physical 
templates inside that structure and those will be recognized by the CAD system when this camera X8 is opened. And as I said before, if there were situations where I create a physical uh, 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 an assembly and I decide I just need a part, I can swap them out. You know, the system gives me options of what templates are available. I'll say I want to convert this. And when I convert it, it doesn't actually delete the original because we want to maintain the history. Now I could either update the revision or just more visually here, I'm just going to drag it and take this new revision, which it put on my list so I could see it, A2. And you can see it's now a part. It's the same, you know, same number, same physical product, title and everything. And I'm going to just attach the other one. But as I said, I could have gone in and said update the revision, which have accomplished the same goal, but have been a little less visual here. So I can quickly make that change and, you know, and, and complete that kind of a, a change in the operation. Drawings are a little different animal in the system because they're not hierarchical to the CAD systems. They have a dependency type relationship, more of a peer to peer relationship to the CAD in, you know, in our view inside the system. So when I add a new drawing and here's one I've already had. You'll notice this is an established one I've created and I've created and it has a CAD dependency. And the reason for that is I open this drawing in, in this example, Katia V5, I open an existing part and I added instantiations of the views on the drawing and save them. By doing that, the system automatically created a CAD dependency as you see by that error over on the side. But I can also look in the system directly. And if I expand the view pane here on the right, and look at the relationships that are now established between a particular part and that drawing, I can see this dependency, not a hierarchical, but a CAD dependency. And this is subsequently why I couldn't just uh, insert it into the tree like I could parts and assemblies. Well, I hope this information, you know, gave you some ideas and some insights. Please feel free to ask questions and post. Um, and uh, we can you know, have a little conversation on, on, on this topic and any of the things I've discussed today. Thanks for your time.